<laughs> he just said, I just got hooked. Well, some of you guys have asked me to do a uh, follow-up Mako boat review on how things have been going since I've had it, since I've used it several times, and what are my thoughts now after the fact, and I think it's a great idea because there's definitely some things I want to let you know about, some additional pros, cons, and just things that maybe you want to watch out for or be careful of if you were to purchase this boat. So I've used it in fresh water a few times, salt water a few times. Overall, very, very happy with the performance. In rough, rough, rough chop, the boat does not hull slap at all. The trim tabs make a huge difference. Uh, I didn't think I was originally going to need them on the package uh, because I didn't have them before in my previous boat and seemed to be fine, but they make a massive difference, so they're a big addition. Overall, super, super happy with the purchase. Just a few things I want to tell you about. So let's just start right at the front with the trailer. The boat does trailer very well. It drives up on the trailer extremely well. I did want to let you know, when you back the trailer into the water, uh, you, want, you do not want to submerge this. If you submerge this top of this tire well right here, the back end of the boat will float. And if the back end of the boat floats, it's not going to trailer very well. So this trailer likes to be out of the water more. So what you want to do, for me, I put the water line about right here, almost maybe a little bit over halfway up the tire and I find it trailers really well. You can play around with this, but like I said, you wanna make sure that the trailer is enough in the water so that the boat can actually touch the bumpers and, and not hit the trailer in the back. But at the same time, you don't want that back end floating. If you, if you keep that back end from floating, it drives up and trailers extremely well. While talking about that, coming to the front, here's another thing I noticed. When you winch it up tight, make sure that you winch it up super snug, okay? Because if you winch it up till it barely touches right here, just barely kisses it, when you drive out of the water, it's gonna be about six inches back. So something about the angle of the boat on the trailer, if, if you don't get this super tight, if it barely touches and you pull out, when you get on flat land, when you're not on the angle of the ramp, you're on flat land, this will be not touching anymore. So as, soon as, as long as you get that snug, you're fine. I did have a little issue with the jack here, okay? So I, I got it off my truck. I put this down in position. I, I could have sworn I heard it snap and lock into position. And then when I went to walk away, I heard a loud bang and this trailer was sitting flat on the ground. This thing had just collapsed and it, boom, just collapsed and hit the ground. It was a pain in the butt uh, to jack off of the ground. So what I did was I put a little extra support underneath there just in case that gives way my trailer isn't going to hit the ground again that could have been my mistake but it could have sworn i had that locked into place and it just boom twisted right over and dropped this thing down so just be careful about that so that doesn't happen to you the trolling motor um, i have really enjoyed the mincota tarova it has been really really good let's see what horsepower I have them here, or thrust. I think I've got the 80 pound thrust. Yeah, I've got the 80 pound thrust. Okay, so here's my thoughts on this. It is sufficient for this boat, but barely. Okay, but barely. Don't get me wrong, on calm water with no wind, if you put this on high, it'll throw you out of the boat, okay? It is strong, but if you've got salt water, if you've got current and wind blowing against you on the highest setting, I mean, it, it, it gets the job done, but not by much. So I'm just telling you, 80 is gonna be probably okay, but do not go less than 80 pounds on this boat or else you will have problems. All right, so let's kind of go look at some other things on the boat. Um, the front navigation lights have been fantastic. I did install, as you saw me do another video, a stakeout, stakeout pole holders, but I noticed that my stakeout pole, this is not, obviously the boat's fault, but as I hit chop, the stakeout pole was slapping the deck of the boat. So I put two bumpers here and a little, a little thing, a little tab here that I can just kind of stick that on and that'll hold a little pressure so it doesn't slap. This by the way is from Black Tip Jet Sports. It's called Black Tip Jet Board and it's just, it has a peel off self adhesive back slap it down. This is the same stuff I have in the bottom of my GNU. Love it. I may end up putting it on other places on the boat. I'm not sure, but I do do I do like that. 
Alrighty, let's go back and talk about, um, of course, I added these. You saw the video where I added these in after the fact. These have been fantastic. I highly recommend doing that if you're going to be trolling. It also gives you additional rod holders in the back. Did one on both sides. Let's talk about the engine. So everything that I read recommended that you definitely want to get the 115 horsepower engine. And so I did. What are my thoughts on that? I don't think it was necessary. Um, I, I, I'm a package weight guy. I want the boat to be as light as possible because I like floating shallow. And I want to be able to get shallow and I want to be able to push off of a sandbar or shallow water if I need to. So I wanted to go as light as I could on the motor. I think I could have got away with something lighter than a 115. This thing has plenty of power, jumps on a plane like no one's business. It's super fast, but I think you could have got away with lighter, okay, than this. The only thing about it though, having the 115, is you don't have to run it wide open, and that might save you on gas uh, versus having a lighter engine and then having to have the hammer down all the time. So, not sure. I mean, I'm happy with my 115. I think maybe you could have got away with something a little bit less. Jack plate has been fantastic. Uh, trim tabs have been fantastic. Uh, they do make a lot of noise. When you first turn on the engine, they, they come down a little bit. And when you turn off the engine, they automatically come up. It does make a lot of racket. So if you're trying to be quiet, you got to be careful about that. You might have to actually kill the power here. If you're trying to come up on some fish and quietly sneak in, you might have to kill the power there instead of just turning the key directly off from there. Okay, um, let's go inside the boat and look at a few things. As you can see, it's a little dirty because when you buy a new boat and you use it, that happens. But let's talk about a few things inside the boat. All right, so first of all, uh, I love the storage. No complaints, no issues there. Uh, on the gas tank, be a little careful. They did warn me about this at Bass Pro, especially on a hot day. Cold day, not so much, but a hot day, if you just push that button and flip that cap, you're going to get a face full of gasoline. It builds a lot of pressure, and that cap does not really release that pressure that much. So you have to actually hold the lid, hold the cap down as you push the release button and slowly let it up, and you will hear a rush of vapor coming out. Uh, let that, let it do that all the way until it stops hissing at you before you open it up, okay? Because it will, you know, nail you in the face. So be careful about that. Let's talk about the rod holders down here. So, um, I've, you see, I use them more for storage. I use it for my brush and then over here I use it for, um, my net and it does have a bungee cord. You can see on both sides that helps hold stuff in place and it attaches right there. Um, I don't really like putting rods in here. I tried putting rod and reels in here and they just bounce that bungee cord. They just bounce way too much and it eventually kind of bounces it way its way kind of right on out so i'm not really cool with that i'm not really super happy with putting rod and reels there all right let's talk about the live well um i i like this the pro air system really keeps the fish alive it works out really well a couple things you got to watch out for make sure that you have the one of these shut that pumps new water in when you're running okay because i noticed water was pouring around the center console around my feet while I was running and I didn't know what the problem was. And it was because with this open, when you're running, something about, there's, there must be a water pickup in the back that picks up water and shoves it in here, okay, from right there and this will overflow. So while you're running, make sure you shut the valve that puts new water in the tank. All right, moving back here. You see, this is my running light, all right? And I had an issue. That running light mounts right there and then right there. But the very first time I went to pull the running light out, um, this little mount just ripped right out of the fiberglass. And the other one just about did on the other side as well. So what I did was I took them out completely. I got a little bit thicker of a stainless steel screw I got some Marine 5200 sealant and I put them back in, but um, I don't know if that's gonna happen again, but from the factory, I mean, they just, they ripped right out. Um, you should be able to take the light and just pop it right out without these 
ripping out, but they did. So I don't know, Mako, you might need to uh, do something about that. Uh, cooler seat, I don't have in right now because they tell you you're not supposed to have it in while you're running because it can blow out and the cushion can vibrate up and down and it can break the snaps, but that has been pretty awesome. All the electronics have been really cool. I've loved it. Um, I find myself, this is the accessory switch. You have to have this on. You got to have the main on. You got to have this on down here. And then you got to have the main on and your accessory on to run your depth finder. Sometimes I'll accidentally somehow bump this and my depth finder will be off. Uh, but just make sure you keep that. If your depth finder just goes off, that's probably the reason why. Right there. Trim tab. Awesome. Uh, the Pro Air system for the bait well. Awesome. Not trim tab. Uh, jack plate. Jack plate. Awesome. The uh, Pro Air system for the live well. Awesome trim tabs very very cool that's been working out great um yeah so i think that's it everything i wanted to mention that i've kind of noticed good and bad and just things i think you guys might should know if you have this boat would i do it all again if i knowing what i know now would i purchase the 2023 mako 18 lts for about forty-five thousand out the door yes i would because People are still wanting about that same amount of money for used boats with bigger issues and problems and no warranty. So I still think this is a great deal for the money. Yeah, I probably will. Uh-oh, 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 Yeah, it's a nice, yeah. nice red. It's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> he just said, I just got hooked. He's like, oh, I'm actually hooked. Good one. I knew the cast was good. Come here, big girl. Mm. You gotta be on your toes. <laughs> yeah, right over here. There we go. That's a nice red right there. Mm. Well, that... Friends over there, girlfriend. 